In the middle of last year, I'd never 3D printed anything in my life. Hell, I hated my 2D printer. Why can't anyone make a printer that's actually reliable and user-friendly? But anyway, when WeFun reached out to see if I'd like to try the Tina 2S, I jumped at the chance, and then realised I had no idea what I would be doing with such a thing. So, can anyone now do 3D printing in 2025 with zero knowledge? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. As I said, I had no idea what I'd be faced with unboxing it. How much assembly is required? Basically, you have to push a tube into a hole on each end and we're done. It could barely be any easier. And for context, this thing is almost exactly the size of an Apple Power Mac G4 Cube for the old school people and has basically the same footprint as the last generation Mac Mini. So it's pretty compact. And that gets you what is just over a 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube, or in freedom units, uh, like three and a half inches cube, something like. I had no idea what I was going to print. Once again, happily, this thing comes with a micro SD card for getting your files from your computer to your Tina 2S, which we'll come back to in a moment, and that comes preloaded with example projects. I printed the pterodactyl because who doesn't love a dinosaur? And about an hour later, the result kind of stunned me. I've not paid too much attention to 3D printing in the past because I th kind of thought it would be a hassle and expensive. So imagine my surprise when the thing printed in place and was articulated. What witchcraft is this? This is incredible. I didn't have to mess with any software, any calibration, anything. I pressed three buttons, I think, on the printer itself and we were done. So now I have a pterodactyl and that's really cool. But you know, what can you actually use this thing for that is useful? Uh, I'm not going to lie, other than printing an Among Us guy for my son, it kind of sat there for about a week, doing nothing. But then, I was renovating the studio that we're sitting in right now, and I needed a new curtain pole. And no, I didn't print a curtain pole. I had a pole. It's an old metal tube that I had my first ever green screen curtain backdrop on uh, when I moved into this house nearly 10 years ago. But how to attach it to the wall? Well, you know, it doesn't come with curtain hooks because it's not a curtain pole but I could probably custom print a mount for this couldn't I sure now I played with 3d design at university but that was about a quarter of a century ago in AutoCAD and things have moved on a little bit since then but I fired up SketchUp which you can use for free online but only if you can find the treasure hunt link that they keep on their website really trying to hide it as well as they can. Uh, I sketched up my part, which was then saved as an STL file, which is kind of the industry standard for 3D models, it seems, and opened it in Cura, which is a piece of software that's included with the printer, and hit the slice button, which turns your 3D model into a list of movement instructions for the printer bed and head, which you then save to the micro SD card. And don't worry, Mac users, all of this software runs on our much prettier computers. And even better, if your computer isn't one of the ones that comes with an SD card reader, the Tina 2S does come with one for you, and a USB to USB-A adapter as well, so even if you've got a modern computer, there's no excuses. Unless you were hoping for a parallel port, in which case, uh, awkward. So, the first version I printed was just a smidge too tight. This printer makes things so accurately to the model that you give it, you need to make sure that there are some tolerances there for how well you've measured it and that kind of thing. But if there's anything that defines rapid prototyping, it's 3D printing. Happily, I was able to go back into Cura and just scale the whole thing to 102%, print it again, and perfect. Slipped on beautifully. I printed a second one, and hey, we have a curtain on the wall. Nice. And durability-wise, it's been holding up my curtains now for a solid few months, and they're like full length like six foot drop curtains i was even able to screw through the piece into the wall and had no issues at all with the 20 percent infill now that 20 percent infill means that there is gaps inside the uh, inside the piece so you know you're not completely making a solid piece of plastic and that 20 percent infill also means when you put a screw through it it's not going to force the thing apart and crack it also saves you a lot on pla then i had a little look on thingiverse which is a decent place to find some free 3d stl files and make this adorable little imac g4 and then i went back to one of my old hobbies from 15 years or so ago warhammer 40,000. and oh my having a 3d printer to hand for things like this is a whole new world boom dreadnought 
the torso for a Tyranid so that I can use the other bits that come in the box to make another model. Old school Necromunda bulkheads that you use bits of cardboard to slot into that they don't make anymore. Detailed bits for the battlefield. Detailed bases instead of the dull plastic ones that Games Workshop give you. This cyberpunk takeaway place. An in-universe sized bolter shell which I keep my dice in. And yes, this is what my other channel is about. The uh, iCave Games channel, and it has a big old apple skewer to it as well. For example, this is my uh, Dreadnought, this is the official model, and um, it contains the corpse of Steve Jobs so that he can continue fighting across the battlefield. I didn't say that this is a tasteful hobby. But genuinely, you can print really handy stuff. This MacBook Air vertical stand you can use to keep it in uh, clamshell mode if you're using external displays. Uh, I also thought it would be interesting to uh, get some fun hands-on time with the new iPhones before anyone else had it. See? Uh, really fun. So I've had a huge amount of fun with this thing. Uh, you can tinker and tune and adjust temperatures and optimise things, but the prints right off the bat are really, really good. However, the nature of FDM printing, which is this style of printing where you deposit filament from, uh, you know, melting some plastic, does mean that there will be faint lines from the layers uh, from printing. Now, depending on what you're making, that may or may not be an issue for you. The main other style of printer would be resin printers, uh, but these are way more involved and typically mean using a lot of more unpleasant chemicals and that kind of thing from what I understand. But they do give you like a smoother finish in the end that can be a little bit more detailed. Now, the other slight frustration was just the size of this thing because it's a compact printer and it's designed to be small and handy for what most people need. Um, while it's awesome for a lot of stuff, sometimes the print volume, that kind of three and a half cubic inch size, does mean that if you want to print something bigger, um, you can't necessarily do it in one piece. For example, this iPhone model, I had to scale down a little bit just to make it fit on the print bed, but on the other hand, a lot of models can be printed part by part, like this dreadnought. Boop. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for your first 3D printing experience, this is a brilliant place to start. It's simple to get going, there's a bunch of free model repositories out there and other paid ones, things like Cults 3D, which have a fun mix, um, where you can find models to print easily, or you can jump right in and design your own with free software as well. Uh, leave me any comments you have on this or anything else tech-wise, um, we can do a follow-up using the hashtag iCaveAnswers. Thank you to all of my Patreons, and I will see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.